going back to Blender, if you want to work on the UVs, there are two different approaches. One is you can go ahead and send it to the paint workspace using either the per pixel painting method or micro vertex, but anything that you import into the paint workspace will automatically be visible and editable in the UV workspace. This UV workspace works exclusively on paint objects, and paint objects in 3D Coat are quite different than retopo meshes or sculpt meshes. These are meshes that are imported directly into their respective workspace. With paint meshes, though, you do have the capacity to work on those in different rooms, such as the tweak room and the UV room, because those are dedicated strictly for paint meshes and paint meshes alone. Okay, with that said, we're now in the UV room, and I'm going to simply unwrap each of these to sort of refresh it, just in case. So, let's go ahead and click Unwrap for the head. Okay, so with that done, I'm going to switch to the torso UV map and we'll do the same thing. I want to click unwrap. Typically what you would do if you want to apply UVs here in 3D Coat is you would go ahead and create your seams. You're already set up to do so with mark seams. You can click an individual edge and you'll see it highlighted in green or you can hold the shift key and you can see a preview of what it's going to select that way. You also can choose edge loops and that way it's only going to look for edge loops. You may want to reduce your brush size. You can use your bracket keys like you would in Photoshop to increase or decrease your brush size. Okay. Now that we're done, we need to click Apply UV Set. This is basically a confirmation that we indeed want to make UV edits because at this point, 3D Coat assumes you may already have texture paint applied. Do you really want to do this? 3D Coat is essentially asking. I hit OK. That's done. Now I can go back to the paint workspace and this time I can go back to my smart materials and if I see any spots on the white paint, I may want to go ahead and apply it while I'm here. I'm going to go back to the metals folder. I can actually look at my material history. If you don't see it in the UI dock somewhere, you can go to the Windows menu under Pop-Ups and choose Material History. Let's go ahead and dock that here. I'll go to the Metal layer. So I'll go ahead and click on that thumbnail. And now I can just quickly touch that object to refill just that part. Same thing here. Another thing I can do is click layer and that will apply it, reapply it to the entire layer here. So I'll go ahead and do that. Yes. All right. Now, you can see the result. Here with paint, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this material by right-clicking and choosing Attach to Current Layer. This will give me the flexibility to come back to this even after I've selected other smart materials. So, for example, if I go to Paints Metal and I select a different type of metal, I can click here and it's going to apply this to everything that's already been painted but everything that's not been painted is going to leave it alone. So this saves me a little bit of time. Going to Material History, I can now switch back if I want. So this is great for look development. I'll stick with this one. And I'm going to make a few other tweaks here by going to the Tweak Workspace. What I want to do is make a quick modification. I can see that this lens part here needs to be extruded outward just a bit. So I'm going to choose Select Transform, Select Objects. I'll select that. Now I can choose to move.
I move it down just a bit. All right, I think that's good. So I can clear, go back to the paint workspace. I'm gonna make one more layer, all this glass. Go to my smart materials. I'm probably gonna use some kind of glossiness, something like that. Yeah. So I'm just going to click on that. Okay, so we're done. And I think we're ready to export now. Let's go to the file menu. We can choose export to Blender. I'm going to choose this one to override it. I'm using FBX because it works best. I want to choose the export constructor and I want to choose the Blender app link. So I'm going to use export low poly mesh and you can modify these as you will. I'm going to go ahead and delete the displacement. I'm also going to choose apply scale. If we made no changes to the UV, then we only have to export textures. We don't necessarily have to export geometry, but in this case, we did modify our UV, so we do need to export the mesh. I'm going to choose 100 for the scale. I'll click OK. Now I can go back to Blender and I'm going to click Get Back. When using the Export to Blender option in 3D Coat, it's going to send a new mesh. So that means we have a second instance of our model. Let me hide that. I'll go to our Look Development icon. So I'll unhide this one. I've got to wait for Eevee to update it. Now, if we want to make some subtle changes, I want to go back to 3D Coat. Let's say, for example, if we go to the paint layer and we want to go to our material history and see how that looks in Blender, we can just click on that. And let's say we want to choose something else and go to Smart Materials. Go uh, back to my paints folder, pick another one, let's say that one. So I can go back to my material history and just click on the different ones, give it a few seconds to update and see which one I prefer. Okay, so now I'm going to go to export blender. Yes. This time I'm not going to export geometry, just the textures, and I'll go ahead and hit OK. We'll go back to Blender. I'll choose Get Back. And there are our changes. So I'll go to the Shading tab. I'll select our objects, hit the decimal key on the number pad, and that will zoom in. I can look at the texture nodes here that were created. Let's see if my normal map was connected properly as well as all my other materials. And I can go back. Zoom in. If I want, I can switch to cycles. I think my render is assigned to Eevee. Let's switch to cycles. Okay. So that's going to conclude this initial look at the export options in 3D Code's AppLink Connection plugin but in follow-on videos, we're going to take a deeper look at the other options. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.